I'm going to go on for a bit because I want to go into my fix for this movie. Like if I were to remake this movie, this is where I would start. With the prologue itself, I got to put that little piss thing over Scott. Um, <laughs> uh, looking for Blofeld and finding Teresa would have made for a better prologue. Instead, it's like Bond's out there looking for Blofeld, and then he's just driving. What we want is a location fix on 007. The PM wants to be informed personally when we find 007. Instead of putting him in some active role going and doing something, instead we just find him driving. So it, it's kind of odd, as opposed to him actively looking for Blofeld and just happening upon Tracy. So you have three elements in this prologue. You have Blofeld, you have Draco, and you have Tracy. So how about something more along the lines of Bond is on a mission, perhaps to take down Draco, and maybe he gets captured or whatever and ends up in conversation with Draco. Bond then allies with Draco, revealing that he's actually just looking for Blofeld. His big picture aim is to get Blofeld. They ally together. Mark Arns Draco. Head of the Union Courts, one of the biggest crime syndicates in Europe. The biggest. Not quite. An organization known as Spectre operates worldwide. And of course, Draco's going to help him out because Bond's like, hey, I'll help you take out your competitor and I'll look the other way on your stuff. Maybe this whole thing with you're going to marry my daughter is there or not. Maybe it's in the back of Draco's head. Who cares? Let's set that aside for a second. We still do the lawyer stuff. We still establish that there's this Blofeld, this Blochamp wannabe sitting in an Alp in Switzerland. So what do we have there? We we have an allergy clinic full of women. Let's say Draco then uses his own daughter to infiltrate Blofeld's allergy clinic. And then she, wanting to impress her father, is like, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. And then he's going to send Bond along, too. And she's like, I don't want this brute. And he's like, I don't want this useless dame. They are at odds, right? Instead of just immediately being thrown in together into the love pit. So you want to rival mance them? Yes, rival mance. I fucking love it. So they both infiltrate this place concurrently, right? They're working together, but we establish that they don't like each other. She would then see him with other girls. Maybe after a while, she starts to get jealous. I mean, Bond is literally in Bond heaven. He's in a building chock full of women from around the world, and they're all babes, right? This is like Temptation 101 for Bond. In this movie, we see him give in to that temptation and it f***s him up. Instead, he's amongst all this temptation. He's in Bond heaven and maybe he doesn't make good on it. An opportunity to shine. As they work together, they start to get a little closer. Like maybe he's going to one of those bitches' bedrooms to hit it and she yeah. walks by and then he's like, never mind. Or... Or he goes to hit it and the mind control thing happens and like that interrupts him. So he ends up not doing it, but she thinks he did it and she's maybe upset yeah. with him. Either way, maybe she starts falling under this mind control, starts to act weird. He's got to find a way to snap her out of it. Bond would then start to reject the other women wanting Tracy instead. And then mm -hmm. this would kind of motivate that whole he's gay thing. Of course, I know what he's allergic to. You could spend a lot more time in the clinic allowing them to congeal and 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 suddenly, you know, their feelings come to a head. Then they escape together. Then they end up in the barn and that's where you really show this change in Bond where he's like, I know I'll never find another girl like you. I was just in Bond heaven with a whole bunch of chicks and one building and I could have banged all of them. But I gave all that up because I'm starting to see that you might be the, the beauty one. to my beast. Yeah. That's great, but that's not the movie. <laughs> that's not the movie because the movie is inferior and it cuts through all of that and just says, ah, eh, f it, they're in love. Why are they in I, love? I Why don't... is Bond in love with her? Bond Char, gets exactly what he Char, wants. Char. Yeah, there was a, there was yeah, a romantic a montage. montage. And I don't care if your <laughs> argument is, your argument is, oh, they had a montage, so then they're in love. Like most movies do that. They show that they have time. I think so that's what? the that's other no thing excuse? with this movie. That's the other thing with this movie is they, like, we, we can talk about the, the run time for this movie, right? Like this movie is 30 minutes longer than all the previous Bond movies. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they spend a lot of time on Tracy. It's kind of a, a cliche in, in a lot of films where you spend a lot of time with the character that means they're probably going to die. And you see it in television shows all the time now. But this movie at least tries to spend that time where Bond realizes like, oh, no, I actually like sign of see where this this woman's coming from because I live in a crazy life. I have ice in my veins. I kill people for a living. And this woman is, I think, broken. As Patterson's put it, she's in the danger zone. 
But I mean, Bonds is also a dangerous person. In the Bond playbook, the franchise playbook, is if the films go too fantastical or too big, the next film goes low key. And this movie actually is very low key. I mean, Bond does barely uses any gadgets in this movie. There are some, but like, not in hey, the comparison. he makes a gadget. He breaks an eraser in half. He puts a, a <laughs> ruler piece of metal between it, and okay. then he clips it, okay? I, he didn't need no fucking cue to figure out how to open that door, okay? But what I'm saying is that he uses, in this film, he uses his smarts versus, you know, being using gadgets. Yeah. So the idea was I that- I do want to go ahead and say that radioactive film. lint is so fucking But that's stupid, a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> joke. That's a ra- it's so Radioactive lint would just kill you, wouldn't it? Like, would no. you just get over time? Well, placed in an opponent's pockets, the anti personnel and location fix seems fairly obvious. Isn't but that that's a good a way to kill well, somebody? And it's just like who who doesn't reach into their pocket and flick out some lint occasionally? <laughs> totally, yeah. To <laughs> totally. just completely you got, you shove it in that guy's belly button and hope he doesn't. Well, shower. Hold on, guys. When is the lint used? That's a joke. In the that, film, I'm other than sure it's the just lint is a joke, they don't right? they don't actually yeah. use they it. Don't they don't actually. Another reason why the prologue is. Wasted. The prologue is totally wasted on a stupid scene between Q and M that just says, where's Bond? He's supposed to be looking for Blofeld. And then Bond is combing the beach for suicidal chicks instead of looking for Blofeld. I don't That's think what I'm he's saying. Combing that... the beach, he just so happens upon her, which I don't think. Why? I, I why? Why? Better justification for it though would have made it a little cleaner. The movie rather than is Bond not just about ha- that. The okay. Movie... Okay. Wait. Wait. So you're telling me that Bond just so happens to find a chick who's the daughter. Of a of a, yeah, a big criminal organization movie, with connections Charlie. to Blofeld. You told totally me being stupid. It seems that like he's that's following movie. her. McCurdy, I'm saying you're a hypocrite if I'm you not think that's less Why convenient. Why am I a hypocrite? Because you were all about Thunderball being all it having uses all these too many times. I even and said now in that episode, you're saying that I those said, are fine. I said in that episode that I can buy one convenience. Okay, and that convenience okay. is that. He so happens upon the fact that he's in the spa with the Spectre agent. That is a convenience that I can yeah. buy because it's the beginning of the movie. I'm like, yeah. that is how a story happens. It just so happens that this f-ing happens. That is the inciting incident of the f-ing movie. And I can You're saying buy that, that for two years, Bond has been looking for Blofeld and has come up with jack sh- And then one day he's driving along and this chick he finds directly leads him to Blofeld. It's the inciting incident of the movie, and I said before, I can a buy little one justification would have gone a long way, though. I can buy though. one convenience in the movie. I somewhat agree with Char, but for me, he's following her to the beach. Yeah. But the prologue yeah. should have been showing us what he's been doing the last two years and why he's following her. Yeah. But he's not following her. She comes up behind him and then he decides to chase her. Again, if he could have been placed on yeah. a mission against Draco that led him, or against Blofeld, either one that, that led him. You're using a movie that doesn't exist to say that this movie sucks, but it doesn't. I'm using it to illustrate a point, which is that the prologue of this movie is lazy. Charlie is trying to argue with McCurdy to say, McCurdy, are you saying this cannot be improved. There's an infinite amount of room for improvement here because it's basically a wasted prologue. The story could have just started at the casino and we wouldn't have missed anything. But on that note, there is one detail that always bugs me, which is that we find out later that Draco's men are basically always following Tracy around as bodyguards. Tracy? He fights one of them in the hotel and then later that guy and two other guys perp walk Bond to Draco. Therefore, I can only draw the conclusion that the men that appear on the beach also work for Draco because I'm not told otherwise. According to the internet, this guy from the beach and this guy holding the gun on Bond at the hotel may be different actors, but it's unclear. Without knowing any of that, they look exactly the same. Well, if that's the case and these guys on the beach are Draco's thugs, why in the hell does this guy hold a knife to the throat of the suicidal daughter of his boss? And even if it's not Draco's thugs, it's just an excuse to have an action-packed opener that is ultimately a waste of time in a movie that poorly sets up a romance between Bond and the supposed love of his life. Overall, it would have been such a better move to spend even more time with Tracy instead of this lame prologue because it would have made their relationship and connection all the more clear. Instead, we skip over anything interesting or that would make us fall in love with her and we just go straight to love montage. And that whole scene with Draco is basically Bond being like, look, dude, I don't care about her. In fact, I think she's kind of nuts. She needs a psychiatrist, not me. 